All right. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to 2020 Tests. And in this one, we're going to be doing a little something different, which is what 2020 Tests is all about. I'm going to be walking you through uh, how I made this uh, 3D stream overlay for uh, Nyx over on Twitter at MC underscore etching. He's a real cool dude. You should go check him out. He makes all sorts of awesome etched glassware things. He's amazing and incredible. And a while back, I made him a... Um, I made him a stream overlay that he uses for his Friday morning coffee and chats uh, streams that he does. And I was happy with it. I was I was pretty happy with it. But the problem is, is that I wasn't 100 percent happy with it. And I, I never would give someone an end product that I was, you know, I wasn't happy with. But there was this always nagging feeling in the back of my head that I was like, I want to have this 3D fully rendered scene for this exact overlay which was uh kind of important so i'm gonna put it on screen so you can see it in the bottom corner so you can see what we're working off of um but yeah this is just me going through and uh making some models and editing some models i found for free and uh just generally uh going through and put stuff together i'm gonna do my best to try to explain what's going on in the time lapse as it happens uh so like right now this is a european style coffee maker i found a model for it but it just didn't want to work for whatever reason so i had to model it myself um but yeah i've i uh after i made that overlay um i was like you know what? i'm gonna learn blender because i really need to have 3d modeling on my skill set anyways so i've been using blender for a lot of different things i actually uh stream it every once in a while you can actually check out my stream uh there'll be a link in the description um but yeah, I've, I've been learning Blender and I finally got to a point where I was like, all right, I can try this again. So uh, I reached out to him and he was like, yeah, you know, if this is going to make you happy, go for it. I was like, heck yeah, it will make me happy because uh, it has been nagging me in the back of my skull for the longest time. Um, so uh, that's what uh, that's what I was doing. Um, so I'm going to try to explain what's going on uh, right now. We're still just modeling. That's a lot of this is me modeling this <laughs> European style coffee maker. I um, at least that's what I had to Google to make the images of the things show up that I wanted. Uh, it's not perfect. There's actually like no hinge mechan mechanism on there. Uh, the spout isn't like properly tilted and stuff. I, I kind of went with something a little bit more similar, uh, not similar, simpler. Um, simpler is the word I was going with. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm adding a little bit of thickness to it to give it a bit more realism because right now it's just like a flat object and I was using a uh, some magic blender uh, magics. What are they called? Modifiers? Yeah. Uh, let's make it a little bit thicker. Separate out the top so it actually has a lid. So there's a little crack in there. So you, it actually looks like a lid even though it doesn't t work it like a lid at all. Um, just a little bit of beveling on these corners to make them look a little less blocky. Um, I couldn't get the bevels exactly the way I wanted them to go. I could have probably done it better, but from the distance and the fact that I'm not like selling this model anywhere, uh, it was definitely good enough for the project and it, it looks great once it was all done. So, uh, and like, I forgot that little, like a uh, little bumpy thing. I don't know what that is. I think it's for like hot water or something. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I actually genuinely have no idea how this coffee maker works, but uh, yeah, this is all me just trying to get the shape of the coffee maker right. Um, and at some point I was just like, eh, good enough. Uh, yeah. All right, now we're on to texturing this bad boy. So uh, because I broke it up into separate little chunks, I'm able to give each part a different texture. Um, granted, most of it's just the same metal texture, and then we use some black plastic for uh, the central bit. I wanted to go for a little bit more like a older rustic looking one. So you'll see in a bit that I go in and I actually edit that texture to look a little bit more realistic. And then we got a place in the scene. As I struggle to move it where I want it. Let me just arrange everything on the set. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So this is me loading up uh, some textures. And this is a wood texture that I got. Um, and so these aren't like high quality. These are literally just images. And what I have to do is I have to take those images and tell Blender like, hey, using this color data, I need you to make it this kind of bumpy. Um, and then Blender's like, I got you. It's uh, it's a process. Looks like we're moving on to the chalkboard now. Uh, this is where Nix's beautiful face goes. 
He is very handsome, so we need to frame him in a very handsome looking whiteboard, chalkboard shindig. So uh, yeah, again, another wood texture, just had to map it on there the right, and then got to get that nice traditional, weirdly green blackboard looking shiz. Uh, another like kind of noise texture that I'm mixing in with the uh, blackboard and making sure that it's nice and rough and looks like it is being used. Um, adding in a brick wall texture. So right there I had to uh, do what's called editing UV maps. So UV maps basically just say, hey, map the texture in this place on this model. Um, and by doing it that specific way, I was able to get it to line up perfectly with the way that I wanted it. Um, as you can see with this little test render, it's looking pretty good. Uh, there's still a few things I need to do, but we will get to those in a little bit. Uh, you can see this is me cleaning up that, uh, that uh, model of the chalkboard, getting that all squared away. I, by the way, I fiddle with that ground texture like a million times. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, is that good? I can't tell. It's hard. Uh, Blender bump maps confuse me. Uh, so now what I'm doing is because I was noticing that with the HDRI or the big circle map that tells the scene what lighting to use, I was getting some light bleed from the uh, the side. And you can actually see there's a seam in the texture there that I had um, that I fixed. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad I did because it is really obvious when you can see it. Uh, but I fixed it later. You're not going to you'll see it in the final renders, but it's 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 it got fixed. Um, we have a second chalkboard that I, I got and I just copy and pasted the other one because the model was the exact same uh, and just changed a few things about it. This is me fiddling with that metal texture on there to make it look a little bit more worn and rusted, which is cool. All right, now I got to make this coffee sign. So if you don't remember in the original, there was a coffee sign uh, and there it is. And I needed to recreate that. So I was auditioning some fonts and getting it all set up right. Probably could have found a better font, but this is the font that I found that seemed to look pretty good and match the original as close as I could. Um, yeah. This is me just fiddling with the 3D settings of the font before I go and convert it to a mesh so I can actually edit it directly because I need to do some cool like insetting things. So this is me deleting the center parts of those letters. Now, if you notice there's a bunch of geometry on the C and the O, but not the F, E and stuff. And that's because there's round shapes and that's just how Blender triangulates uh, the shapes. Normally, you'd probably want to fix that, uh, but I didn't. So it looks good. So I got that going for me. This is me trying to import a light bulb that I made a while ago. Um, I actually 3D modeled a light bulb for no reason. I don't know why I decided to do it, but I'm so glad I did because now I have this super good light bulb model that I could just import for this little project. So, heck yeah. So this is me importing it and getting it scaled and in the right place. And now you're going to see me duplicate it a bunch of times. I actually made a mistake here and I only duplicated the glass of the light bulbs. So there was nothing actually glowing in them and it looked really bad. Uh, as you can see, when I render it here, I'm like, oh, only one light is on. I'll fix that later. <laughs> um, and so now I'm going in and I'm adjusting the texture on the coffee sign. Uh, again, just using some wood textures that I found, giving it a little bit of uh, pizzazz. Seeing what kind of mappings look good. I'm pretty happy with that. And now I realize that I need to delete all the light bulbs and do it all again. So I have to make it all to one object. And now I can duplicate it and the light bulbs will light up. Um, I wanted to give these a little bit of variation. Uh, I didn't want them to be perfect because uh, this was like a very old and weathered coffee sign. Uh, so what I wound up doing was I actually uh, you can kind of see me fiddling with it here. I'm giving them random rotations and I'm giving the random levels of brightness. So like the light bulbs are kind of slowly dying at different rates because it's such an old and used up sign. So uh, you can see I'm adding in. Uh, I'm just fiddling with the emission right now. Uh, trying to get these things to light up the way I want them to. And then at a certain point, I use an object random thing, which will give me a random value for each ra object that I've duplicated. And then I'm using that to control how bright each light bulb is. So it looks a little bit different for each light bulb. It gives it a little bit more realism. I wanted to give it that nice little touch. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the modeling. I did need to get in... Uh, Oh, I'm tilting the sign back so there's a little bit more shadow underneath it so it doesn't look flat. Um, 
And now I'm adding in another model that I made. So uh, Nyx does all this awesome glass etching. Again, totally check him out. I'm going to link him in the description. Uh, but he does all these cool glass etching. So I made my own little uh, etched cup that has like a simple D20 design on it. Um, and I'll put it in the scene there and it looks all sorts of awesome. So yeah, that's the 3D modeling. Here's a couple passes that I've done. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It has been eating me away alive having done this and <laughs> not being able to do it in perfect 3D. So I'm glad I had the chance to set the record straight even though the original was perfectly fine and there was no reason for me to do this, but yeah. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this little weird blender thing. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, I do a lot of stuff like this on my Twitter. I post all sorts of 3D renders, especially uh, been on a recent gaming kick. Uh, I'll show some of the renders that I've done on screen now. So if you want to go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter and go follow MC Etching on Twitter. Go follow Nix. He's amazing and wonderful and always a blessing to have on your timeline. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, whenever that is. Ta-ta. <laughs>